California State University Los Angeles is a campus filled with diversity and culture. It is composed of 50% Hispanics, 21% Asian and Pacific Islanders, 11% White and non-Hispanics, 9% Black and non-Hispanics, and 9% Unknown. According to Van Jones, a political activist on CNN, Donald Trump is a racial opportunist. From making reckless and inflammatory statements about Muslims and Mexican immigrants, along with other derogatory and controversial comments about China and the Jewish community, it is fair to say that Donald Trump's liking towards immigrants is questionable. As the California state primary election approaches, I took the time to speak to some students and faculty members of Cal State LA in regards to what they think about Donald Trump. I think Donald Trump, um, I've heard many awful things about Donald Trump. He's a businessman from New York and has very golden hair. He's all over the media, he's all over everything. Well, I know that he uh, hosted Celebrity Apprentice. I know that for sure. And I also know that he's running to be the president of the United States. He's uh, currently the front runner in the primaries and um, he's doing really well. Well, my views on Donald Trump are not favorable, to say the least. And so make America great again isn't really saying make America great again, it's saying make America white again. And make, <laughs> that, I mean, that's really what it is because in, in, his, in his greatness, there is no room for anyone that is not like him, that is not white, that is not Anglo-Saxon, that is not a white, white male. Basically, white male dominance is what Donald Trump represents. I remember reading something once about a guy saying, I don't understand how Hitler came to power, but now I do. As a businessman, I can say he's done great moves. You know, he's done what he has to do. As a person, he's revealed his true colors as um, being quite a racist and not so stern on the minorities. Just recently with the whole take on abortions on women, it's just been very, very horrific. It's very saddening to see someone still like that in this day and age. He knows how to work in media. He knows how to use it to his advantage when it comes to getting people to notice him. So he could say something, but he's not just going to say it plain. He's going to say it so everyone's like, oh, I, I, I heard that. I know who it is. Like, I know where to find it. It's Donald Trump. He lacks every quality that a president should have. And it's astounding to see how uh, so many people are seeing the quality that they want in him despite his uh, bigoted stance on many issues. When he said that women who have abortions should be punished, I was just through the roof so upset. What about the man who got the woman pregnant? And you can't punish the woman for having an abortion and not punish the man. If you're gonna punish one person, it takes two to tango, and it takes two people to have a baby. As a politician, I think he is he's a failed opportunity. I see, I understand why people are voting for him. I think people don't really get it. He uses white identity politics. He must believe in white identity politics um, because he has such a long history of it. Um, I think that uh, he's a narcissist, um, possibly a sociopath. <laughs> He is basically the, the conduit through which Americans are sending a message to politicians. We have had it. Uh, we are sick. This country is sick of electing people to office and having them go there and do nothing but set themselves up for cushy jobs after they get done. They spend our money. They throw it away on things that we don't care about. Uh, there's tons of incompetency. There's tons of fraud and misuse in government. We're all sick of it. Americans have really just had it. And all of a sudden, here comes Donald Trump, who is like the opposite of a politician. He is as far away from a politician as you can get. And Americans are saying, through support of Donald Trump, they're saying, you know what? You politicians had your chance. You screwed up. Now we're done with you. We live in a society, in a, in a country that is so diverse 
and there's so many people from so many different backgrounds that it's almost like it's it, it's it's almost unfathomable how he could be so be so popular but then it is very fathomable when you look at the 400 to 500 year history of the United States which this country was founded upon the separation of us and them these people are worthy and these people aren't worthy these people are slaves these people are landowners and these people will only ever be slaves and these people will never be slaves and so when you look at the foundations of this country it's not even a far stretch to imagine why he's popular because <coughs> it's hearkening back to a time when there was complete white dominance and that's what they want and that's what he wants As far as a politician is concerned, I think he would make a very poor politician. Um, he has absolutely no experience in it. His views are too radical, and uh, I just cannot see him winning an election. And I, I fear for the country if he were actually to win. The wall that's supposed to be built, that's funded by Mexico. Mexico. Is <laughs> Go make Mexico pay for it, though. I guess, like, as a Canadian, I feel like we should probably propose building a wall between Canada and the States. <laughs> I don't even think we can fund it. I mean, who would, who would build it? If the issue was illegal immigration, right, you would also propose to build a wall on both sides, the northern border and the southern border, right? But you never hear the rhetoric talking about illegal immigration from the northern border, that is our border with Canada, because generally speaking, those folks who immigrate that way are, as Paul Mooney says, have the complexion or the complexion for the connection epidermally, they're white folks, right? A person who's leading um, our country brings world unification versus um, separation and building a wall, even the idea is unconceivable and, and just absurd to be quite honest. There already is a wall between Mexico and the United States and uh, maybe not a physical wall, but there is a wall. And if it wasn't for my father coming here, I would have never had the opportunity to get an education to have a better life for myself. I kind of think he's just saying things uh, and people are like, yeah, 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 I believe him because he's so confident in what he's saying. He just doesn't really have any backing to go with it. It's interesting, I was just reading an article about that the other day in a uh, Latin American um, uh, news, organ news organization. And they were talking about how even if he were to become president, um, him building that wall and having a foreign government pay for it would be a violation of international treaties, it would be a violation of international laws. Uh, so it's just absurd from not just a practical perspective, but just politically, it's absurd that no country has really uh, been able to build a wall and then foot the bill to a foreign government. That just doesn't make any sense. So again, to me, it just uh, is an example of how ignorant a person he is, that he doesn't even understand international law, international policy, uh, foreign policy. He just says things that he feels that he wants to say. Just, I feel like him being so negative against Mexicans and even all Latinos, it's uniting people. Like, they, it's giving them like a common enemy, you know? Since day one of his campaign, he stirred up a lot of controversy with his remarks towards um, the Mexican people or even Latin Americans for that matter. Um, I feel that if anything, he's brought, um, he's brought us closer together. I feel that because of his rhetoric, his negative rhetoric against immigration, um, it's made us more aware that we as a people need to stick together and, um, and actually pay attention to, to matters that um, affect us here in, in America. Um, now we're more in tune to the news, what's going on um, in the polls, um, how are the elections running, and um, and now we're going to be able to go out and probably have the highest percentage in Latino votes this election because of that. 
I think what he's saying, and I think what, what, what Americans who support him are saying, and I'm being really kind because I know that people who support Trump uh, get a bad rap. They call them they call them racist. They call them this that. But I think what Americans are saying, and I think Americans of both parties, Democrat, Republican, Independent, doesn't matter who you are. I think Americans want to be safe. We know that we're not safe in this world right now. I think that everybody welcomes immigration in the United States. That's a big part of who we are and what we are. We all are a product of immigration in this country. But I think that the thing that we were forgetting is that we need legal immigration. I'm not going to lie. I struggled to find a Trump supporter on this campus, which speaks volumes about the way East LA feels about Donald Trump. I did manage to find one, and this is what he had to say. Well, I have all positive views on him. Uh, I think he's a great businessman. I think he's a strong leader. I think he has good international plans and good fiscal plans for the for the country. What is your view on the wall that he has proposed to build? I think it's a good idea. I think it's a great idea. People, people who come here illegally have a, um, actually, there's a very big problem with human smuggling. And people who are not knowledgeable about uh, international problems think that well, we're, we're keeping people out, we're, we're not being fair. But in reality, what, what building a wall will be doing is actually try to eliminate, it's actually the more humane thing to do because people who are smuggled here illegally uh, via, via underground tunnels, via uh, uh, the, the forest, the desert, the deserty parts where there are no borders, they, they run a risk of dying and being exploited and being killed and murdered. And what the wall will do will actually eliminate that to a certain extent. By not having a wall, we're actually being inhumane to immigrants. After speaking with this young man, I tried to get more conservative viewpoints. I sent a message to the Cal State LA Young Americans for Freedom, which is a club dedicated to help bring the conservative voice to the student body at our school. I asked them if they would like to voice their opinion about Trump in this documentary, but unfortunately, no one got back to me. God bless you. You're saying, every, you're saying everything that I've always wanted to say. I'm Hispanic descent. You're not being racist at all. You're telling the truth. And I think that you, uh, we, should, we have to make America great again. We need a strong leader in the country. And I hope you go all the way, become the president. Just rethink your take on things. You can't run a government the way you run a business. You're a joke. Donald Trump, if I had one thing to say to you, it would be, you're fired. But for God's sake, learn how to filter what you say. Think before you talk. Keep control of the conversation. You, if you want to be a world leader, you have to think and control the narrative. You've played a good game and you're pretty convincing, but I don't think that you have what it takes to be the president of the United States. Go back to reality TV. The presidential race is not a reality TV program. Donald Trump, you should join my circus. I think you'd be a great addition. Mr. Donald Trump, Mexico had a president, the first Indian president, in 1857, and he said the following. Among nations and individuals, peace exists when there is respect for the rights of others. Entre naciones e individuos, existe la paz cuando hay respeto al derecho ajeno. Donald Trump, I need you to check your privilege. I need you to recognize that your white privilege and your attempt for personal success and personal gain is very detrimental to this country. I need you to recognize the humanity in human beings. Recognize that we are all the same and when I hurt on some level, you hurt. When I hurt on some level, all your everyone hurts. And so when everyone hurts, I hurt and we are all connected. Go. Donald Trump should not be president.